Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I'm going to take on a first generation or second generation uh, graphite um, baitcaster. It's the Bantam. It's a uh, BMAG 1000. Kind of intrigued by this one. Uh, I had one similar to it, and um, I'm going to take this apart. It seems to run fine, but uh, I'm going to just make sure that I service it <coughs> before I take it fishing. I like it. It's got a narrow spool. And uh, that's going to mean limited profile uh, in terms of capacity. But I also like the idea that uh, it increases casting distance because the, the line is not moving all through on a stationary um, reel like this. Now, one of the things that is key, since this one disengages when you go to cast, is to center that uh, line guide before you throw. That's going to maximize the distance. And as you can see, the valley of this spool lines up directly with that. And it's going to enable you to throw the, uh, the line further. And then, of course, once you click in, the uh, line guide starts going again. <clears throat> so let's take this reel apart. We'll show you how it's made. We'll service it, make sure that it's going to be able to uh, perform the tasks I'm looking forward to. That is uh, kind of throwing some spoons out there and see if we can't catch some fish with them. And um, take it from there. So I like to start by taking off the exterior pieces, and as I do, I like to thank our first responders and essential personnel, everybody who's a uniformed service, anybody uh, involved in EMT, fire, <coughs> rescue, first aid, all of those fields, the medical fields, the hospital staffs, both in the ER and in general, the administration. <coughs> teachers, essential workers, everybody who's keeping us safe during this pandemic. Your efforts truly are heroic and appreciated. I thank you for that. Okay, nice metal uh, star adjuster. We don't see that these days. Nice ball bearing on the side. And this is a good place to tell you, if you don't uh, work on these reels frequently or you're unfamiliar with the reel, take pictures along the way. That way you'll be able to see the sequences that you take the pieces and parts off in and how they go back together. So the ball bearing was next and we have this copper or brass or whatever it is kind of a, a spacer between there and there's two shim washers. I'm not going to knock them out at this point and we'll get them when we open up the case. But there's two uh, concave uh, washers in there. They're tension washers. That's going to uh, provide flexibility or variability on that star adjuster. There's four side plate screws here. They look to be uh, Phillips side. So we're going to go ahead and take those off. And this is a good point to tell you if you like these kinds of videos, you want to see more about fishing wheel repair, you want to understand how fishing wheels are made, how they come together, how they come apart, and how they go back together again, uh, then I'd ask you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please hit the notification button. That way you'll see all the reels that I'm working on, and you'll get to choose which ones you want to watch. I work on all kinds, fresh water, salt water, bait casters, spinning reels, trolling reels, you name it. Whatever comes in my shop, you're basically looking over my shoulder at as I perform the repairs that are requested. All right, there's a couple of side plate screws. I've taken those out, and you can... Uh, <coughs> can knock the rest of them out there. There's one more that's been a little stubborn here. But I like to put those on the table just to make sure that all those screws are the same size. And they are. And in this one, interestingly enough, with all those little bevels and the like, I'm going to put this into a parts tray. But before I do this, I think I'm just going to put them right back into those holes there. That way it'll make it a little bit easier on me and, and probably won't lose them to uh, having them knock around. They're small pieces. Small pieces tend to get lost. And so what I do with small pieces and what I do with all the pieces, this one might be a little bit harder, is I put them in a parts tray. And that way, even if they do knock around, they, uh, they don't go far. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. The parts tray is really nothing more than the bottom of a, a, a milk jug or another kind of jug, whatever I happen to have at the time. This one's been serving me quite well for a while. I'm not sure exactly what was in there before, but it's working well now. Might have been some kind of soap or something. All right, there's uh, 
main gear. Those are the little adjuster washers I was talking about on top of the main gear. This is your drive for the uh, line guide. Two springs. Those are the first things I take off when I open up a case. Because <clears throat> those springs tend to shoot. Pinion gear, yoke, jack. And this one's very clean. It's been running nice. But again, if I'm going to take it fishing or if I'm going to resell it or I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do with the reel, I want to make sure before uh, somebody else gets it that, uh, that that the work has been done on it, that, it, that it's okay. All right, I'm going to try and remove the main gear now. That came off relatively easy. This one has a click ratchet feature for a, uh, a kind of a traditional forked anti-reverse dog. I'm going to remove the yoke and the pinion gear. Those are going to just lay on the table for a moment. Then I'm going to remove the click ratchet. And I have two screws here, so that usually means that there's a bearing underneath there. So let's go ahead and take this, whether it's a bearing or a bushing, we'll check it out. I like the quality of this reel an awful lot. This one, quite honestly, didn't cost me much. It came in a bunch of reels that I bought. So I guess when I average it down with the number of reels that were in that purchase, it wasn't terribly expensive. But uh, like I said, sometimes I just like to, to and relive some memories and go back and do some things. That's what I'm trying to do here. I'm getting this re-spool release in a way. There we go. Pulled it out. We have a bushing, not a bearing. We have that C-clip holding that on. We'll just give it a little bit of oil and put it right back in place. Sometimes there's a bearing under there. You certainly want to make sure that uh, if it is a bearing that you take care of that before you go any further. If you have questions on a reel, maybe you're working on one, uh, maybe you're stuck along the way, maybe you're considering buying one, and, uh, and you just uh, kind of have a general question, you can leave that in the comments section. I do try to respond to the questions. Generally, I try to do it in the mornings. So uh, put it in the comments section, and we'll see what we can do to get you an answer to that. If I, if I don't know the answer, there's plenty of answers I don't know. I will uh, try and direct you and uh, help you out along the way. If you try calling the number on the business card, that's going to be problematic for you. I don't uh, don't have an opportunity to answer the phone too much, so uh, it may take a while to get back. So the, the comment section is the best way to go. All right, this is the, the forked anti-reverse dog that I was referring to that rides on the ratchet just like that and when you have that dog back on then you want to find that silver rod that's uh, coming out with that anti-reverse you need to roll the whole assembly kind of coming down at the same time it's got to go in square and then you need to make sure that you're on As, a, as that rectangle. It needs to be seated properly, otherwise the reel will not work. There we go. I had the uh, free spool release was in the way. Next on then is that round washer. And now we're going to take a look at the drag stack. <coughs> so we have a, a flat washer on the one side, Pretty much an identical setup on the other side. And you just want to make sure that these washers still have slip. Now in this case it feels like this one is sticking to the metal. So I'm just going to use a razor blade to just clean it out. Try not to damage it. It can be reused. But there's some dried grease and I want to take care of that. That's what's holding it on. These are hard washers. They generally do not need any uh, grease, but you can put a little bit of drag grease or just regular fishing reel grease on there if you like. And I'm going to rebuild that side. That's, this one goes this way, then we turn it over. 
And this one is a more flexible washer. I'm going to put some dry grease on that as well. That's Cal's Universal Dry Grease that I use. If you uh, if you don't have dry grease, that's fine. Use use regular fishing reel grease. I wouldn't recommend anything else. Now you can see why that drag was sticking. There's a, uh, a bunch of dried grease on that. And that, of course, is not going to allow the drag to operate properly. All right, then we're just going to line this up, kind of keep this sandwich together. I'm going to do the same thing here. We're going to go for... Just have to align that key. Check the teeth while we're at it. Check the teeth on the main gear. These are very clean. I think that's one of the issues with this. There is no issues, but one of the things that would bog performance is that it's not greased very well. So get a good amount of grease on there. I use Pen Precision Real Grease when I'm greasing my fishing reels. I really don't care too much which grease you use, but I do care that you use a fishing reel grease. Getting ahead of myself. <clears throat> you want to do the same thing with the pinion gear. Check all the teeth. Get a good dose of grease onto it. And these kind of have to go back in the same sequence that they came out. When you do something like this and you, and you didn't take a picture and you're worried about what the orientation is, look for the two ramps on the back side of that yoke. And see how this one goes off on an angle. That's the back side. So when you put it in the back side, you also face the notch for the spool in the same direction. So that goes over now. And you seat it on those two uh, plastic posts, one on each side there. Just kind of push it down. Pull up on your, your jack. That way it's... Uh, out of the way and not causing problem. Now you can put the main gear that's been greased on and you want to mesh that main gear with the pinion gear. Then we can put the two tension washers on. So I didn't do anything to the jack. It's perfectly clean. I'm just going to take some real oil. Just put a little bit of slip in there behind it. And also while I'm at it, I'll put a little bit of oil where that worm drive comes through. We go back into our tray then we're going to find those two springs that ride on the outside of the plastic posts on top of the yoke. There's a little cavity there but you still need to be careful with these. There is a uh, tendency for springs to shoot and if you're not careful you'll kind of be looking for them. All right that's all set on the inside that's how the reel should look main gear with the double drag stack, one on each side, pinion gear, springs, your dog on the metal post, your uh, line guide mechanism below, your free spool release above, and if you've taken that uh, spring off your free spool release, well that's how it goes. All right, and grab the side plate then. This is a simple matter of aligning everything up. Okay, I just heard a nice snap. That's the way that this goes. The first time around I saw a little bit of spacing that I didn't like. That usually means something's misaligned. Don't force anything. Just step back, take a collective breath, and then go do it again. Now we'll get those little screws in. And we're going to go over to the other side. So the nice thing about this one is, is that uh, it's pretty rugged. It's got the same design today, that, uh, or the reels of today have back then. If anything, the, uh, there's a little bit less speed in this one. Uh, some of those reels today, uh, like the um, the Abus and that, they're going up to 8, 9, 9 to 1 ratio kind of things. This one is not that high speed, but uh, it's plenty. And I'm sure as I throw a lure this afternoon or this evening, that uh, I won't be missing anything in terms of the retrieve rate. So you got to fit the tackle to the species you're fishing for. 
and the time and so on. And this one, I believe, is going to do just fine. I'm uh, going to be fishing in a uh, the um, Hudson River uh, Bay. It's called Raritan Bay down in New York City. Uh, this time of year, you have the uh, juvenile bluefish are in, and they're getting ready to go. And um, they just it can be a lot of fun. Um, light tackle, small shiny lures, and uh, you can pick up a pounder or two pounder on light tackle and have a blast. So, kind of thinking that's what we'll do a little bit later on today. All right, there's a couple of screws on this side. I want to make sure I take this spool out, and then to do that, I got to come to the other case. Of course, like I said, this is kind of second generation bait caster, and uh, they got a little bit more educated, if you will, or sophisticated in his side case designs, and they all came out with a, uh, a trigger that um, can help you remove this side case without any screws. This is before that happened, and that's okay. Okay, this is the piece to that. Clip the balloons in the side case. Should be able to remove the spool and everything now. Oh, not before we remove those two screws. This is your mag adjuster. Built right into the spool housing. Good news with those is they're silver coated as opposed to the uh, metal ones, so you don't lose track of those. Now we can remove the tension ring, the spool, and the mag assembly. Then I'm going to take the mag assembly this way. So there's a bushing inside of this, there's not a bearing. So all you need to do on this one is make sure that it's clean and that you put some grease on to the two shafts, just like that. All right, you never want to go do a whole reel, find out that you forgot something. There's a bushing on this side too. So this is uh, got the bearing on the main shaft and that's about it. But it is important as long as you're taking the time to service the reel, to do it correctly and do it uh, entirely. Okay, let's put this back in. Put a ring that goes on the top, go get those metal screws here. So if you have a reel that needs to be serviced and you're not up for servicing it yourself, you can always drop me a line. I do service fishing reels by mail. And I will be happy to provide you with the reel repair information. Please use the email on the business card, the Gmail address, to contact me. Again, if you try by phone or if you try through alternate sources, it's uh, not, that, not as efficient. I was a little bit skeptical when I started this channel almost three years ago now about uh, the power of social media. Well, I'm not skeptical about that any longer. It's uh, quite a thing, but uh, in some regards it's too much, too many ways to reach me, and sometimes it gets lost. All right, we have, uh, let's see if we can't get this little piece back over that uh, screw. These are just like little tension washers to hold the screws in place. It's probably something that they did from a manufacturing perspective. It just made it easier for them to install these. All right, same idea then. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to bring that back over, make sure that it meshes easily. I've already got one screw started there, so let's go ahead and finish that one. I just noticed on my desk that I lost one of the tension washers on the other side. 
that's okay. We'll make sure we put it back together as we go to install. This would probably work better with a micro screwdriver. I keep all my uh, screwdrivers and the like right, right on the bench next to me. It's better to do it that way when you're trying to grasp a reel like this one. Hold everything together and then have to put it down to go search out the, uh, the tool that you need. And one more screw here. And the only thing left then is to put a little bit of oil into the the pole. We rebuild the bearing side over there. I'm going to turn that so that it comes out of the way. And then we're going to remove this pole cap. Now this one's got plastic teeth on top of it. So be careful not to over tighten this when you go to put the pole cover back on, those things snap very easily. Okay, we'll take the pole out. We want to examine the pole. The pole is in good condition. You want to make sure that the, the two shoulders on each side of the pole are clean, because if they're not clean, uh, they won't turn efficiently uh, when, it, when it has to cycle back to the other side. tight space. I'm going to just try and use a, a needle nose pliers to put it in. There we go. Alright, now we can put the plastic cap back on. You want to do two things here. Again, you want to make sure that it's threading properly. That is, that it's going on square. You don't want to cross thread it. And you don't want to be in a position where the you crack the uh, uh, the teeth on that. All right, we should be good there. Let's go ahead and put these washers back on then. Remember the sequence, so we had the two tension washers. We had this bronze bushing kind of thing. We have the bearing. We have this beautiful metal adjuster. And we'll find that on today's reels. Easily, uh, you grab the handle. The handle rolls on these two pins, so it's a good idea to put some oil into that. Can I use a fishing reel oil? In this case, it's uh, Lucas's fishing reel oil. Lucas, I guess, is pretty well known for their lubricants and automobiles, but uh, they do uh, make a fishing reel line as well. Thanks to the viewer that sent that in to me. All right, one more tightening sequence here. Let's tighten down the handle nut. I mean, you have to play with that handle nut a little bit. Turns out, a, oops, that was an oops. Behind the handle and the handle nut, there is a tension washer that goes in there that prevents the star adjuster from backing up on the handle and wedging it in. And that's the value of a parts tray because I just looked into my parts tray and saw that thing sitting there. So if you like this video, please uh, hit the like button on it. And uh, that, I understand, helps me somehow in YouTube. After all these years, I still don't know their rankings of videos and the like, and I really don't care to know it. But if it helps, it helps, right? This is where I mean you have to Make the slight adjustments. This one needs it a little tightened so that you can align that set screw hole with the hole in the hand. That's the last one. That goes in. Tighten that down. Okay, nothing left but a final test drive. That thing is spinning nice and easily like the day it was made. Flip. Looks like a nice flipper reel. Good anti-reverse. Oh, drags need a little tightening. There we go. Drags are set. Nice quiet operation. That's it. 
That's your Shimano BMAG 1000, uh, second generation uh, low profile bait casting reel, graphite case, and uh, nice overall condition with one ball bearing construction, the ball bearing being on that uh, uh, drive shaft there. So I hope you've enjoyed it. So please stay safe, stay well, stay watching, and have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.